Hello everyone, welcome back to Cinders. Alright, so you might have noticed that last episode, I I, I, I made a mistake. Um, but that's what it looks like. That's what, that's what Cinders looks like when you record it the, just straight off the bat. Um, for some reason, <laughs> Cinders makes a recording a software think that it's full screen when it's not. I apologize for that, but um... Yeah, you get all my mistakes because I don't do editing and I didn't remember and problems professional very good have fun all right let's continue with this all right do we visit Tobias or do we go to the inn I, I wanna I wanna go to the inn I want to go to the inn so sure the inn it is then why does she look so evil I don't know this place looks so full of life. Although, to be fair, it's a little bit shady, too. I hear this inn attracts some of the less honest people in town. But at least it's exciting. People here actually know how to have fun. Yeah, see, we might be able to get information here. It's nothing like that stiff and proper place that I'm forced to call home. Carmosa and her daughters are all too proud to do anything fun. Oh, is that the captain of the guard sitting alone in the corner? I wonder if he'd let me sit with him. Or if I should approach him in the first place. I'm already spending time at the tavern instead of going back home. I might as well just take the plunge. Um, hello. Hello. Do you mind if I sit here? There are plenty of free tables in here, but it seems you already made your mind. Thank you! I just wanted to chat with you if that's okay. Are you really the captain of the prince's guard? I am. Um, the king appointed me to this position himself. Ever since his death two years ago, I've served the prince. And how is the prince doing? What's it like to serve under him? Do you like it? Wow. Alright, hold up the interrogation. He's the prince, my ruler and liege. That's all that matters to me. Oh, I see. Um... Oh, I saw you rescue the kidnapped ch child the other morning. That was really impressive. It was simply my duty. I suppose. What'd you say? Did you really have to kill them? You were brave to fight them. Uh, I mean both. I, don't, I feel like this is more Cinders, where, this, how we're playing Cinders right now. And I kind of want to see what he says, so. Was it really necessary for you to kill them? Surely you could have let them live. It was not my choice. They chose that path when they put innocent life at risk. I'm sure those bandits were just desperate, not thinking clearly. It's cruel to take someone's life just because of a poor decision. That's a fair argument. But what would you have me do? Would you rather risk the chi life of the child who did nothing wrong? Or better yet, should I leave the fate of the bandits and child to the crowd? What if they tried to break in and the bandits decided to kill the boy? Or maybe the crowd would have burnt the house down and everyone would have died slowly. At least by my sword, those men were given a swift death. It's my duty to uphold the peace. That is what I did. Your words may be correct, but your way of thinking is flawed. You hide behind your duty, but it's still your choice to spare a life or take it. Could, can you really sleep well with such a flimsy excuse as duty? No. No, I don't think you can. You have an interesting way of thinking. It's nothing I've considered before. You're an interesting girl. Might I know your name? I'm called Cinders. An odd choice. Well, my name is Pearl. My father used to call me that because of my hair. <laughs> now it's stuck, though in the mouths of my sisters it sounds more like an insult. I see. And I wish you well, Cinders. The sun is already setting. I've spent the whole day in, in the town, and what a day it was! I guess time flies when you're having interesting chats with people you normally have no chance to talk to. 
Oh, how I wish life was a fairy tale and I could do that every day. Oh, every day. And yet, life is what it is and I have never even been able to stay in town past sunset. When I was a child, I had to head back to the residence for safety. And then Carmosa entered the picture and took over. But even without her, I would have been a bit detached from the town's life. I might dress and work like every other girl here, but I still live in a mansion quite some distance from town. I have no real friends here except Tobias. I hear no news, no gossip. I really don't know what their life is about. Sure, my own life is safer and probably more luxurious. But I wonder what it would be like to live here, be a normal town girl, wake up to the sound of life and excitement on the street. Get out of bed knowing a myriad of things await me when I walk out the door. That life goes by fast and an adventure might begin around each corner. I don't think that's how, mo how most of the people living in town think of it, but good. And again, if some town girl looked outside the window right now and saw me, what would she think? She would probably remember her own boring chores and the constant danger of hogwash flung from high windows to the street. Exactly. She would envy me. I need to stop daydreaming. It's getting really late. Exactly. It's, um... People are tired of what they have and want, want what someone else has because in their minds it's better than it might actually be. My golden cage awaits and the two sweet singing birds I share it with are going to screech their lungs out if I stay here any longer. And I wouldn't want to give them reason to worry, much less an excuse for picking on me. Alright, our residence. Home sweet home. I used to love returning home when my father was alive. I miss sharing the events of the day with him. Now it just seems like a grim prison, and my parole has just been revoked. Not to mention I'm probably up for a long talk with the jailer, seeing how late it is. You're back. Safe and sound too, with no sign of having been attacked by robbers, wolves, or some such. Though, I probably shouldn't be surprised they didn't want you either. Sophia, charming as always. I kind of expected Gloria to be here and try to reprimand me. It doesn't seem like her to just let such a breach of rules slip without a word. It does seem strange, doesn't it? I'm as surprised as you are. I thought there was nothing as, imp as important for her as taking any chance she has to mimic Mom's contempt. Oh, I can imagine already. If Mom was here, she would tell you you should have stuck up. Should have a stick up your derriere like I do. You're awful. And more importantly, off the point. What happened with Gloria? I don't know. She didn't seem that angry. More like sad, really. But both mean that she's not well at all, so I'm content either way. She was so bummed out, she didn't even want to speak to you, so that's a bit of a disappointment. Her frustration and you getting yelled at, that would have made my day. Doesn't it ever occur to you to stop this? We have had a whole Carmosa free day! Can't you just, can't you drop the act for just a moment and tell me how, how did you spend your day of freedom? Oh, I wandered through the flowery fields, bathing in sunshine and harmony of nature, and kissing butterflies. Let's not forget about kissing butterflies. If that is what you prefer, then fine. I sat in my room, okay. I'm glad I did. Nobody bothered me there, because who would bother to come? I finally got some peace and time for myself. You spent the whole day locked in your room? Why? Why do you care? Oh, I see. You're awfully chirpy. So the reason for this friendly attention is for me to reciprocate and ask about your day. You want to boast to someone. Don't you want to tell me how beautiful the world outside is? How good it was to meet new interesting people, make new friends? Well, how did you spend your day? So I did spend the day enjoying other people's company. People I could actually talk to and they answered without spitting venom. Do you see something wrong with that? Sure, there's nothing wrong with it. If 
If you haven't got your own ideas or thoughts to follow, or interests of your own, go ahead, busy yourself with the lives of others. So you have found something better to do with your time. Fine. Care to enlighten me and share what it was? This is the point where I tell you my deep secret that makes me interesting, worthy, and good. Then we continue with a friendly and fascinating chat and end up holding hands. And I allow your kind words to heal my soul and your gentle caress heals my heart. None of your business. It's annoying, the way you constantly pry. Since you're not going to entertain me by being yelled at, don't you have some other things to do? Speaking with you is no walk in the park. Believe me, ending this conversation is more than fine by me. I prefer to be alone anyway. But do be careful. Those bedbugs can get really big and eat you alive if you let them. Everything is possible in the fairyland you seem to live in, princess. I wish you well too, Sophia. Good night. Cinders, are you awake? Uh, I'm awake. I'll be right there. I'll get to work in a minute. No, it's not about that. I just need to talk to you. Alright, Gloria. Uh, what, is, what is it? What is so important that you have to speak with me at this hour? Uh, at this hour? Uh, you mean noon? I want to speak with you about the way you've been behaving these past few days. Now, there goes my nice morning. Or afternoon. Listen, I realize we were never really on the best of terms, but what has been going on recently is something new indeed. If you really think that I will turn a blind eye on all your childish, egoistic exploits, then you need to think again. What are you talking about, Gloria? I didn't do anything. Oh, you didn't do anything outright destructive. You're far too smart for that. But do you think I haven't noticed all the little jabs at me? You take every opportunity to undermine my efforts and make my life harder. Really, I don't know what's happening to you, Cinders. Do you think I'm stupid? Do you think I don't see it or that I don't have any feelings? I'm trying to understand you, I really am. But it seems like you are reveling in this chaos you're creating. As you wanted things to fall apart. As if, as if you wanted things to fall apart. Despite the efforts of all those who want to keep things together. This is where we differ, Gloria. True, our relationship was never civil. But I think I'm beginning to understand why. We may be a family, but we are not alike. All I'm trying to do is to survive in this house as unscathed as possible. What seems like chaos to you is freedom for me. Besides, let's face it, Gloria. Things are already broken. Only Carmosa and you are still pretending that you can glue them back together, like some ugly heirloom everybody hates. Typical answer of an angry child. Do you even realize that you have managed to describe the house, all of us, as if it was all about you? It's such a shame that Mother taught me so well about the importance of family. It must have made me naive. Because I still have hope that you will mature one day. Wow, really? That's what you took from that? That's what you took? <laughs> okay. Excuse me, mature? Yes, become an adult. A person who's able to grasp a larger picture. Go beyond one's own interests. Also someone who can sacrifice personal happiness for the greater good of the house, if it's necessary. I don't deny that it can be difficult at times, but we're not children anymore. We must realize how we all depend on Carmosa and support her in any way we can. I see. Well, it certainly doesn't play well with my idea of maturity, especially the part about supporting Carmosa. Of course you would say that. Just like you, Mother can be a difficult person to get along with, I admit. But her tensions are good. Think about the way she's putting all her strength into giving us a good life. And if you still doubt her, try imagining our lives without her. Though, mind if I do? How long do you think this house would last with her gone? You must understand she won't be here to care for us forever. And I can't do it alone, Cinders. I need your support. Um... 
Oh, what do we say? I guess you're right or you are wrong. I mean, the way we're playing Cinders right now, definitely, I guess you're right would be the answer. And I cannot. Uh, I mean, I see her point. Like, I see, I see people's points. That's not it. Sure, I guess you're right. Alright, I see your point. And as much as I hate to accept it, I think I can agree with at least part of what you're saying. Of course, Carmosa means well. It's her house and we're her daughters after all. At least you are. It's her actions, not her intentions, that I have trouble understanding. But maybe not anymore. Perhaps we're more alike than I've imagined. We're survivors. Doing what's necessary to cope with the situation we've been presented with. Such insights give you credit, Cinders. They tend to come with age. Yeah, we just matured in like five minutes apparently. If that's true, then Carmosa must be really old, and her sight is completely different than mine. That would explain some things, which... Maybe she's a victim of harsh circumstances. Maybe she did have to struggle all the time. And yes, maybe I can't really imagine what she went through. But think about the woman she became. A black widow. So spiteful that she hurts her own children. Yep. But cinders! Please, let me finish, Gloria. With all the pain she suffered, there was a lesson there that she missed. Sometimes being nice to people around you can make all the difference in the world. She has no right, no right whatsoever, to turn our lives into hell, Gloria. And you know it. She is how she is, Cinders. She's doing her best to manage everything, and it is a great burden. She can be terrible, but only because life can be terrible to her. You surely don't intend to change her now. Oh yes, no doubt, no doubt about that. I'm not talking about changing her arachnid nature. I'm talking about changing ours. We could certainly use some improvement in our natures, you know. This picture you're painting in front of my eyes seems pleasant, but also not very realistic. It requires one thing that we do not have. Mutual agreement. And we will not have that as long as you are not on one as long as we are not a one mind. That is, as long as Sophia keeps up her silly act. Gloria, I doubt that it is Sophia who we should be worrying about in this situation. I'm having trouble picturing her opposed to anything that would bring us more freedom from Carmosa. No, Gloria, it's you. You are the unknown in this equation. We can't be sure about your loyalties. Now this is something I didn't expect. You're behaving just like Sophia. It would seem that you two have much more in common than meets the eye. You both prefer to spend your time criticizing me rather than trying to contribute. You could be helping me, helping us somehow. How can we understand each other if you don't even try? Sophia is just a poor broken creature composed of vile and self-pity. A pinnacle result of Carmosa's caring upbringing. But all in all, she's exactly that and nothing more. A product of the way this family works. She didn't just sprout out of the ground inherently bitter, you know. No, you and Carmosa forced her into this mold. You share responsibility for making her the little Miss Sunshine she is now. And where are you going with this? Am I to shower her with sentiment from now on? Or should I, considering the way she behaves towards me? Even if she was mistreated in the past, there's no reason to shut herself away from the world and bark at it from within her room like an angry dog. No, she made up her mind. She does not want me around her. I can't change that, even if I think that it is regrettable. I can't believe this is Gloria the Reasonable speaking now. The one who sees beyond her own selfish interest. If you do acknowledge the fact that you separated yourself from her in the past, why not try to force your way back? You can do this, Gloria. You can get your sister back. You just have to swallow your pride and try really hard. And so you recognize it well. I am the most reasonable. And I am the only one here that actually does anything to keep up the house. That might be just a bit of an overstatement, Gloria. Each one of us puts some work into how this place works. For better or worse. We just have different perspectives, and so we give a different kind of input, but... 
Surely you realize how naive that sounds. It's something one might say to a slow child to spare its feelings. I've tried to help you both understand the importance of Carmosa's rules, and yet I seem to be the only one capable of understanding their requirements to keep a proper household. Will nobody ever learn? How long am I supposed to guide you and work along, alone against the laziness of others? Has it ever occurred to you that you might not have all the answers? Because that's the root of the problem, right there. You try to be our teacher or our, our disciplinarian. You have no knowledge what we lack, nor a higher status, and you're not our mother. Stop trying to imitate Carmosa. Is this how you think a sister should act? How should I know? Do any of you lack, act like one towards me? Apologize, reason with her, or fight back. Um, definitely not fight back. Um, she's right. Uh, hmm. Apologize or reason. I don't know. I don't know. I want to do both. Um, I mean, she's right. Um, uh, 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 wow, this, this decision is taking too much time. Um, Okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? <sighs> Apologize. Let's go with that. You're right. I'm sorry. I guess both sides are always responsible for a relationship, and neither me nor Sophia has made it easier for you. Yet again, the voice of reason speaks on my behalf, and all it took was a little honesty with yourself to admit that I am right. No, yeah, you are. I mean, partially, you are. Absolutely, sure. Cool. Can you see the argument for my previous behavior now? Uh, not completely. Stop it. Can you actually hear yourself? I reached out to you and apologized. And what do you do? You yourself have admitted I was right and my behavior was correct. No. <laughs> Uh, I did not admit that your behavior was correct. I admitted that we have been treating you wrong. Wrongly. I said that both sides are always responsible. And so I apologize for my faults towards you. But you are responsible too. How dare you! I don't know about Gloria. She like, she's sort of reasonable, but she doesn't have complete... I get, I get what she's doing, but she doesn't have complete self-awareness. Like, she does, she thinks that she's self-aware completely. She thinks that she has control, but she actually doesn't. Not fully. And we could do what we always do. Throw blame around. I'm sure there's plenty for everyone. We can even share some with the neighbors. How about acting normal for a change? We've had it hard in the past and took it out on each other. Let's start over. And how do you imagine we do that? We could try to act like sisters for starters, or at least like a group of semi-friendly normal girls. Exchange information in basic conversation without bringing out the big guns. You know, talk? I think I would like that. I'm glad. I promise to treat you better from now on, to act more sister-like. Thank you. Fine. I shall try to put some effort into it and treat you well, too. Thank you. I'm happy we finally agreed. And in light of taking care of one another, you're still speaking a bit like Hermosa. Please, take more care of yourself and your own needs. Stop trying to become her. Not that again. Gloria, would you please stop for a second to think and answer one simple question truthfully? And what question might that be? 
What do you like to do? I... And no, I don't mean something that you feel obligated to do. Not a chore, necessity, or an assignment. What do you like to do? What makes you happy? What do you do just for yourself and nobody else? But... What are your goals? Where do you see yourself in the future? What will you do when Carmosa's not here and you're able to move on? Where do you want to go? I... I don't know. I just want to make everything better. This house should work as intended, and it should do so because of me. I want to make everyone happy and keep it all together. Fine. And when you accomplish that, what then? Imagine the house is running smoothly, Carmosa is proud of you and relax. All tasks complete. What will you do with all your free time then? I don't know what to say. Indeed, such a situation seems highly unlikely to occur. So I'm not giving it much thought. I... Who are you? What do you know about yourself? I... I don't know. I don't know why you're being... Why you're so mean to me. All I did was come here with an open mind to talk to you. Find some mutual understanding. You get no understanding because there's nothing there to understand. You came here to reenact Carmosa in a statement of superiority. That is not true. I did indeed try to get through to you. You simply would not listen. You didn't either. Get through to me? You came here with your air of superiority to boost your own conviction. You don't care about myself or Sophia. All you care about is you. This is pointless. I see no reason to listen to such nonsense. Especially since I do nothing to deserve such treatment from an immature brat. Both of you are trying to turn everybody against you. Then you will be able to whine about fate that brought you to living in cinders and pain. I must have had some kind of a huge lapse of judgment to even consider treating you as a mature woman. Oh, look who's talking. Do you even understand the word mature, or is it just something you repeat after Carmosa? Fine, Cinders. Get out. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. You have one more day until Carm Carmosa returns. And I will not stoop to debating the order of things with you any further, nor try to teach you. You can go and do as you please for today. We'll see where your freedom gets you. Haha. <laughs> we both know you're powerless to stop me from leaving the house. Or from doing anything for that matter. So you can stop pretending. Or did you grow accustomed to pretending too much? Pretending to have control, to be self-confident, to be Carmosa? I do not have to listen to this. Goodbye. Hello there, Hall. Let's see what new surprises you have in store for me today. Because I have to warn you, after a conversation I just had, I am hard to impress. Hello there, early bird. Only old surprises, apparently. You really should try harder next time, Hall. Having a conversation with the room, how bizarrely refreshing. It's good to see you too, Sophia. No, I never thought I'd say something like this, but here it goes. Carmosa was right. Too much reading does annoy you. But evidently it also makes you interesting. At least interesting enough to make my eternally, eternally uptight sister sneak into your room when she thought I wasn't looking. I seriously doubt she's that naive. It doesn't matter. The real question is, what did she want from you? Did, did she come to ask for help? So many hours without the chance to struggle for Cabal's approval must have left the poor girl quite disturbed. Oh, you know our Gloria. A true stronghold of independence. A font, font of wisdom. I take it she came to spread her usual Carmosian propaganda among the little ones. Only to meet with steadfast resistance of the people. We will not be silenced, shouted the crowds. Oh my, it must have been quite a display that the guard intervene. If you're asking if there was any violence, then yes, plenty. The streets and squares practically turned red. Oh, how lovely! Was she hurt? Did you slap her? Uh, no. I think that would be going a bit too far, don't you think? My dear simple sister, 
Who can really say? Such things tend to be relative, you know. And a one man's hero is a criminal to someone else. It's simply too complex for a girl like me to decide. So when it comes to Gloria, I don't analyze and stick to the golden rule. Violence is always the answer. I see. I think you've just given me a bit too much information there, Sophia. Oh, you're such a child sometimes. In case you didn't notice, we're living in the middle of a dangerous and unforgiving forest. This place is packed with wild, bloodthirsty predators. And whether we choose to see them or not, they exist. What a lovely thought. I will think about it on my trip through the woods today. Oh, you're going out again? I have to eat something first, but yes, I am going out. Why? Oh, I was just wondering, what do you actually do when you go out? Considering you have no money or friends to speak of. And noticing how much time those little trips to the town can sometimes take you, I couldn't help but think that... Oh, it's silly. I know that I'm going to regret it, but alright, I'll play along. What were you thinking about? Excuse me for being so bold, but do you by any chance go to town to work? To do what? Oh, you know, to make coin independently. You're incredible! Thank you, dear sister. Remember that there's no shame in that line of work, Cinders. They say it's the oldest trade in the world. Oh, that work. I am going now. It must be hard, you know. Apart from the acts, there's still the matter of bribing the guards, finding clients. If there's someone I need to find, it's people I can talk to who aren't, you know, dead inside. You can always speak to inanimate objects in rooms should you fail to find any living soul interested in what you have to say. Go to hell. I will be praying for you, dearest sister. Alright, you do that. We're gonna go to town in the next episode. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see ya.